Bismillahirrahmanirrahim 5090 specimen paper 1 syllabus 2023 this is second video and we cover question 27 to question 40 in this video we start with question number 27 which row shows the effects of the hormone glucagon and insulin now we all know that what does glucagon do glucagon converts the glycogen to glucose so the only possible answer is glycogen in the liver is converted to glucose. Well, this could be a possible answer. Glycogen, this could be a possible answer. And this is wrong. Why? Because it's not in the pancreas. This is wrong for this reason. And here it is wrong because glucose is converted to glycogen. So these are the ones so we've narrowed down to now B and C. Now let's look at the effect of insulin. Now insulin converts the glucose to glycogen. So this is wrong. Glucose is converted to glycogen in the liver. Yes, this is correct. So the answer is B. But then why is this wrong? Glucose is converted to glycogen in the pancreas. No, I mean, this is the one which is going to catch you. This is wrong. It's never, there's no glycogen in the pancreas. And of course, this is wrong as well. So the, the question is that where is the glycogen? The glycogen is in the liver. The glycogen is not in the pancreas. It's either in the liver or the muscle. So this is what you have to be very clear about. Question number 28, what is the role of oxygen in the control of phototropism in the shoot of a plant? So if the light source is from this direction, then we see that the, the shoot will grow towards light, right? But where is the oxygen present? The oxygen is present on this side. So more oxygen is distributed on the shaded side of the shoot. And this causes the cell on the shaded side to grow longer. So these will grow longer this side. These will grow lesser. So this is what you have to understand that the more they will go longer. So they say that this causes the cells on the shaded side to grow longer. So that is why the answer is B. This is something very factual, which you must know that because of light coming from this direction, then the tip releases oxen. And the further growth is going to be towards light. And this is because of the oxen being more on the other side. The light is coming from this side, but oxen is more on this side, the shaded side. Because this is these cells are going to grow more, and that is why it is going to bend. Further growth is going to be. It's not this part which is going to bend. No, it's the further growth is going to be in that direction. Question number 29. The diagram shows the chromosomes in a cell nucleus. Which diagram shows the products of one division of the cell nucleus by mitosis? Now, there are two cells here. There are two cells here. Let's look at C and D. Oh, in C and D, there are four cells. In D, there are four cells. So this is wrong. These are wrong. Because mitosis doesn't produce four cells. It's only meiosis that produces four cells. Now, let's look at A and B very closely. Now, in mitosis, the two cells, we say the daughter cells are genetically identical. So if you look at this cell, these two cells are genetically identical. And so the answer is B. These are not, these are half the number of chromosomes in it. One of each pair has gone. This one has gone, this one has gone, and this one has gone. So one of each pair that happens in meiosis, but this is not even correct for meiosis because in meiosis, four cells are formed. So even this is wrong for meiosis, even if the question was meiosis. Question 30, the diagram shows the parts of a flower. Where must pollen land to pollinate the flower? The pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma. Now, as we all know, A is the anthers, B is the ovule, C is the stigma style ovary, yes, and D is the stigma. So where does the pollen land to pollinate the flower? This place. So the answer is D. Question 31, which conditions are needed for the germination of seeds? So my answer is always TWO, temperature, water, and oxygen. So temperature, water, and oxygen are the factors necessary for germination. So oxygen is present here, water is present here, carbon dioxide is not needed because the seed does not photosynthesize. So carbon dioxide is not needed. That is why the answer is D. Temperature, water, adequate temperature, water, and oxygen. Please not moisture. Moisture is wrong. And not air. Air is not needed for germination. Only one gas, oxygen, out of the whole air has nitrogen also and carbon dioxide also. So air is not needed. Then coming to question number 32. 
which row correctly matches a hormone with its function in the menstrual cycle now if you look at the hormones now the basic uh, if you are not very clear about it you must read up the menstrual cycle or watch the video on the menstrual cycle fsh is follicle stimulating hormone it results in the production of the ovum inside the ovary lh is produced on day 14 and it is a surge of it and it causes the release of the egg and that is called ovulation and estrogen results in the repair of the uterus lining after the menstrual cycle and progesterone maintains the uterus lining so that is why lh b would be the answer because it stimulates the release of the egg fsh does not cause the release it causes the production of the egg inside the ovary then question 33 which human feature shows discontinuous variation you know discontinuous variation is then there are no intermediates and there are just a few categories few distinct categories so the answer is a because blood group is only four distinct categories either you have blood group a b o or ab so distinct categories hair color can be of course many different shades of hair can be present that's continuous variation many different heights of 16 year old boys or girls and foot length is also very variable so these are all examples of continuous variation not discontinuous variation uh, question 34 which statements about genes and chromosomes are correct a chromosome contains dna yes a chromosome is actually made up of dna and a dna and protein so this is true uh, a gene is a section of dna that is also true so the answer is a these are other are all wrong because of course it's uh, it's somehow somewhere one of them is not matching with the correct definition then coming on to question number 35 now this is a little difficult and we need to do it in a certain manner which i'm going to just explain to you now question 35 the diagram shows a family in which some members suffer from a disease caused by a recessive allele fine now if it's a recessive allele it has to be small a small it can be you can use any letters i'm just using a you can say when b b is fine so now it says male without the disease female without the disease male with the disease female with the disease so the first thing you do is the people who are shaded have the disease so they have to be this so you write this here so person 1 who has the disease has it then person 3 who has the disease has it then person 6 also has it because they said the shaded ones are the ones who have the disease and the disease is a recessive allele so now the people who are not diseased are these people and these people so these can be what these can be either this or they can be this now the question they've asked you identify two members of the family who must be heterozygous heterozygous means this but how are you going to figure this out now you've got very easy to figure this out you see 3 4 one and two are the parents they have 4 and 5 but 4 is married to 3 3 is the female 4 has to be what because you've got to understand is that why 4 has to have a small a why is it got to have a small a because there is a small a here 3 and 4 have 6 is their child so one small a has to come from 4 and one small a has to come from 3 so this one small a has come from 3 and one small a has come from 4 but then these people do not have the disease so they have to be capital a small a can't be capital a capital a because you see there is an offspring small a small a and small a has to come from one parent so this is not possible that person 4 has to be big a small a then when you look at 5 what is the person 5 person 5 is not a disease causing so it's got to be this person 5 has got to be either this or this it has to be this why is got to be this because one small a has come from here this is the small a which has come from parent 1 so big a small a then person 7 is not a sufferer so it has to be big a small a because the big a has come from here and the small a has come from here so now identify two members of the family or heterozygous person 5 and person 7 so the answer is a so uh, now coming to question number 36 which statement identifies the possible benefit 
of genetically modified crop plants. Now, you have to realize if one of them is the benefit, the others are all the adversities or the bad points of it. So some crop plants can be genetically modified to give resistance to disease. If the plants are resistant to disease, then that results in more crop yield. So that is the benefit actually. But let's look at the others which are wrong. Now this one is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong, but why are they wrong? Cross-pollination of genetically modified crop plants with weeds could produce new varieties of weed. That's dangerous because the weeds would then uh, become rampant and then there would be no place to grow crops and people would die of hunger or starvation. Then the use of genetically modified may explain the increase in food allergies in children. Now that's also not a good thing if children are going to become more, more allergic to foods. Well, we'll have a whole generation of allergic kids. Then there's more research needed on the long-term effects of genetically modified crops on the environment. Well, but if we need research for long term, then when will we start benefiting from all this research? If we're going to take 100 years to do research on this, so this is also wrong. So the answer was A for question number 36. Now coming to question number 37. The diagram shows a pyramid of biomass for a food chain. Which level represents the producers? Now, in any uh, food chain, a biomass of food chain, this is the first one is always the producer. So the answer is D, but then this is the primary consumer. And then this is the secondary and then this is the tertiary consumer. So the first one always the biomass like a tree, the mass of a tree. And then you have um, maybe caterpillars on the leaves. And then you have birds eating those caterpillars and then you have eagles eating those birds. So which level represents the producer? So this would be the first level is always in a biomass, in a pyramid of biomass. Pyramid of numbers, of course, also producer is first, but then it could be a smaller bar because of one oak tree or one mango tree or one orange tree. So the answer to this is D. Now coming on to question number 38. Which stage of the carbon cycle depends on the presence of bacteria and fungi in the soil? Which stage of the carbon cycle depends on the presence of bacteria and fungi in the soil? Bacteria and fungi, now the catch was bacteria and fungi are also respiring. So you would have thought it was respiration, but no, I mean, respiration is only presence of bacteria and fungi in the soil is only for decomposition. Combustion is in cars, photosynthesis in plants and respiration. Of course, plants and animals both respire. Even the bacteria and fungi respire, but plants and animals respiration would not be called decomposition. So decomposition is specific to this bacteria and fungi in the soil. Now let's look at question 39. The graph shows changes in the population of plant and animal planktons in a lake. Now I've covered the plant, uh, I've colored it green and the animal blue. Now here is the link which you are, you've got to watch out. This is the first peak. This is the plant peak. And then this is the animal peak. Similarly here again, this is the plant peak too. And then there is an animal peak too here. So there's some sort of a correlation. You can see, consider the following statement in relation to the data provided by the graph. This is the population size. These are the months. Population changes in animal plankton occur after similar changes in plant plankton because the animal feed on the plants. Which description fits this statement? It is a possible interpretation of the data. The data does not support the statement. The data are too random to be interpreted. It's the only way to interpret the data. Yes, it is a possible interpretation because you can see the peaks are very, you know, they're very, uh, they show that the animal populations increase and then the first the plant population increase and then the animal population increase. So you can see the plant population increasing here. This is a peak here. And this is followed by the animal peak here. So the answer is A to this. It's a little difficult. At times it doesn't make sense. At times you just have to be very careful and realize that, you know, the other answers, uh, this of course was totally wrong. The data is not random. It's over a year that we've done this whole study. And it is the only way to interpret the data. No, but there are sort of other, there's only two places where we can interpret the data. We can, possible interpretation is there. 
But of course, we would need to do more studies to really say that okay, this is the only interpretation. So we've only got a one-year study, which is giving us only this data. And the last question, 40, when untreated sewage flows into a river, why does the oxygen concentration decrease? Now, you see, we have to realize sewage contains a lot of dead matter. And dead matter means that more food for bacteria more food for bacteria to more food for them so they reproduce more and when they reproduce more the bacterial respiration uses up the oxygen of the water and that's when the fish start to die but here they're not asking you this. They're saying when it enters the liver, what happens to the oxygen? Why does the oxygen concentration decrease? Why? Because the bacteria have reproduced and the bacteria are respiring. So there are more bacteria now. So more bacteria because there's more dead matter. Sewage contains what? Urine and feces. So more dead matter, more bacteria, bacterial numbers increase, bacteria respire use up the oxygen of the water and the fish start to die. So that is why the answer is C. There is an increase in the number of bacteria. Why? Because now bacteria have a lot of food. So they have a lot of food. So they're just going to reproduce more food, oxygen available. So reproduce aerobic respiration and number of bacteria increase. That completes this paper. This is the specimen paper for syllabus 2023. Thank you very much for watching and I hope this has been a helpful exercise in helping you to understand how to do the MCQ exam.